Hello and welcome to another little Jessie Bear book club vlog where I'm talking about the Mistress of Rome series of books which comprise really of four books and one short story which is in A Day of Fire which is, you know, a mosaic novel but I wrote kind of a funny story about how I discovered the Mistress of Rome years ago when I first started college, I met a girl and we became friends and we both really, really liked historical fiction so we went out for coffee, we thought we were being really cool, we were discussing books and being fancy and she recommended this book to me and she was like, oh it's so good about this emperor and this slave girl who becomes his mistress and her old owner also is his mistress and it's like full of drama and I like, she said she'd lend it to me and then her mum gave it to the charity shop and I don't know, it always stuck in my head, like I was like, oh, if I ever see it, I should buy it. But I couldn't remember the author's name, Kate Quinn. And then finally, about, God, eight years later, I was in a second-hand bookshop in Spain, the one me and my mum always go to, and I seen it on the shelf, and I bought it, and oh my God, like, I just devoured it. Like, I think I read it in three days, and I'm like, it's not a small book at all and at that point I'd got quite bored with like Tudor court novels like Philippa Gregory had really lost her appeal to me for me and Elizabeth Chadwick had just like she got a bit repetitive like I was reading like some of her older stuff and like her stories like a lot of the time people always end up happily ever after you know it's a bit like Ken Follett like all his stories always end with the good guys winning but like oh it's so good like, Thea in it is like, she's okay, you know, she's a, kind of the main character. She becomes like, she's a slave girl, she ends up being the mistress for the emperor, but it's her owner. Her owner who is the real piece of work in this. But I have said before, and I will say it again, I love a baddie. And I love a baddie where you get a POV and where they have proper motive and... Thea's owner, Lapida, is just so damn evil. Like, she's just like, oh, there's no words to describe how horrible she is, and it's amazing. And then there's, you know, she has an affair with this gladiator, she gets sold. There's a lot of drama in it, and it goes on pretty much straight after to the Empress of Rome, which follows Thea's son. Vesengetrix or Vix for short. I don't know how you'd pronounce it like Vix or Vex. It's spelled Vix. But like if you're from the UK, you probably know Vix Vapor Rob. So like I like to say Vex because otherwise it's just a bit weird. And he gets together with Sabina, Lapida's daughter, and that is just amazing. Like the next two books in the series, this one, The Empress of Rome and The Lady of the Eternal City, follow their love. And it just, it's very mind-blowing, like, there's a lot of intrigue going on, it's loosely based on historical events, but it's the writing and the story, and it's one of those books that shocks you, like, there's things that happen in it that you're not expecting. And that's really difficult when you do read a lot, you kind of get the, you know, you know how things are going to end, you can predict, like, oh, three chapters from now, this is going to happen, you get so used to it, but they have really, really shocking moments, both of them. This one, in fact, my boyfriend left me for like six hours, he went up to see his parents and I like lit, sitting on the sofa when he left and I think I read like half the book in that time and he came back and he was like, have you even moved? And I was like, no, just been reading all day, but I would really recommend it. This one is like a prequel to The Mistress of Rome. To be honest, it's more of a standalone novel. There are some overarching themes and some overarching characters, but they're not really touched upon that much in The Mistress of Rome. They're just kind of background figures. But you do get another little glimpse like this. I, don't, I can't remember what chapter it is. It might say at the beginning. I can't remember. But it's really, really there. Well, anyway, you can see she is... Where is she? Kate Quinn, yeah. Well, she has two characters from this book, Diana and Sabina's father, are in this book for a chapter, which is, is good, you know. I asked Kate Quinn after I finished reading all of them if she would ever write another one. She actually replied to me. She's really lovely. Like, I wrote to her on Facebook, and she replied to me and said, 
It wasn't something he was thinking about touching on again, that he'd kind of, the series had run its course. But I really wish she would write more because they're so good and I would love to see some Commodus books by her. Really love to see some Commodus books. This book was very hard to get a hold of and I don't really know why. And it was also, it was 20 pounds. I know it says $16 on the back, but it was 20 pounds on Amazon UK. And it took ages to get there because I bought this one and then I bought this one. And then I bought this one like before this one arrived because this one took like two months to arrive from the US, which was really annoying. Also, I want to talk about a pet peeve of mine. Three of the books have covers like this. Just, you know, normal, standard, paperback. And they've got this sort of artwork on the front with this writing. And they all sit really nicely on the shelves together. So, the Mistress of Rome, the Daughters of Rome, and the Empress of Rome all sit really nicely. They're the same size. They're so pretty. And then Lady of the Eternal City has a book cover like this. And it's like so much bigger and flatter. And it just doesn't look right on the shelf. It's a pet peeve of mine when like authors do this, like they decide to change it up in a book series because they, and it just looks bad on my bookshelf. Maybe I'm just being, you know, aesthetically minded and I want some visual appeal, but that's just me. There is also like a Kindle, like Kindle mini book that kind of covers, like this book was meant to be a lot longer, but her publishers didn't want it any longer. So I think there's like five chapters. It's like a Kindle mini book that covers the space between this one and this one, like, cause there's about a year goes by in between, but I would really, really recommend them. Like this one's good, but you could probably leave it out. The Daughters of Rome. I don't know. Like it kind of, it covers the year of the four emperors and it's very jumpy. It's good, but it's not as good as the rest. And Day of Fire is a good read. You know, if you like the odd mosaic book, it is a good read, not the best read, but these three are the best for sure. And like, I would read them in order. Don't try and skip any of them. Like definitely read Mistress of Rome, then the Empress of Rome, and then Lady of the Eternal City. Um, the Daughters of Rome is more world building. It's more character development. Like you get to see the family and why the family has struggled to get to this point, but the thing is, like, Thea's not in it, Sabina's not in it, Vix isn't in it. You know, you kind of, like, you have to learn a whole bunch of new characters, which is easy enough to do. But in the same breath, you're kind of like, oh, like, I'm just jumping into this. Maybe I felt like that because I read it in between these two. You know? Which probably isn't how you're meant to do it. But, you know, Amazon should have been better with their deliveries. I know Kate Quinn has written a bunch more books, mainly about the Borgias, I think. I think that's right. I'm going to check on my phone. Also, I need to point out, which I kind of forgot actually because it's been so long, like it's been two years since I read them. This book has another name. It's also known as The Empress of the Seven Hills. And I don't really know why. I think Lady of the Eternal City sounds better and also has different cover art. But it is the same book. Like I've done a lot of research, don't worry. She has two boot books based on the Se Second World War and then one on the American Civil War and then two on the Borgias, but I'd like to read the Borgia ones, but I've read so much about the Borgias. You know, if you read so much and you know how each story is going to end, it kind of takes some of the joy out of it, but maybe someday. Like, I'd definitely like to get the Civil War one because I recently read Gone with the Wind and fell in love with it, but they're pretty good. I would highly recommend them. But definitely start with the Mistress of Rome. Don't jump in anywhere else. Mistress of Rome is where it's at. And it must be a pretty good book because it's stuck in my mind for eight years until I found it. And it really is. And there's lots of POVs. Like, the POVs from, like, the love interest in it are a bit, eh, you know, I could live without the Arius the Gladiator. Like, I could live without his POVs because, like, Thea and what's her name again? I forgot. And Lapida. Like, they are the good ones, like they're interesting. And there's a bit of fortune telling in it, but it's done very subtly with magic, you know, so it's like easy to understand. It's not like, oh, they're like seeing the future in a mirror. It's like, no, they're just looking and it's lovely. And like, it's not like overkill, it's just in the background. Cause like, I hate it when like they force magic on you and it's like a real life story. 
that like a pet peeve of mine. But Sabina is like Lapita's daughter and he is the best and there's two books about her. And she is brilliant. And I also love Vix. He's just like Vix or Vex, whatever you wanna, way you want to pronounce it. He is just so cool. Vess and Getterix Red. You know? But I would highly recommend them. And she's quite, Kate Quinn has a really like good like Facebook page where she updates everything and sometimes she runs like giveaways, like book giveaways. And she always replies to you, like I've written to her a few times like about her books and she'll always answer any questions. Really, really, really nice woman. Highly recommend. And you can follow her on Twitter as well. But if you like this little review, remember to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. And you can follow me on Instagram as well at Lady Jessica Riddell. And I know I promised you guys another Six Tutor Queens book, but they take time. I've got loads of notes. I finished reading Catherine Howard, The Tainted Queen, and I have like 4,000 words of notes that I need to put all in order, get all my images sorted, and then record. So hopefully they'll be out next week. But for now, guys, bye!